Good morning. Welcome to Urban Voice Gordons Bay. We are busy with a series called Under the Influence. My name is Wesley and over the last five weeks I have been looking at the Holy Spirit and the role of the Holy Spirit in the life of the Christian. From the understanding that the Holy Spirit is a person that was promised to us, um, he has power, he came with a purpose, um, he starts to develop fruit in our lives, which is Christ-like characteristics. But not only that, he also helps us to perform the ministry that Jesus had on earth and he gives it to us through the gifts that he has. So this morning we're going to look at the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Let's take a moment as we pray and ask God just to help us to understand his word. Father, we thank you again that we can gather. We are gathering in small groups this morning. Uh, some of us may be watching this on our own, but we thank you that you promised to be there with us, that the Holy Spirit came so that he could be with every believer and that he can draw those who are not yet followers of Jesus towards Jesus. And so I pray right now, Holy Spirit, come and teach us, show us, reveal to us more of who Jesus is and how we can live like Jesus. In your mighty name we pray. Amen. Gifts. We all love receiving gifts. Um, whether it's just been Mother's Day in our country um, and in a few weeks time will be Father's Day. You know, just looking forward to receiving some interesting gifts. At Christmas time we receive gifts and people give gifts because of their love and their hope. That whatever they give us will be appreciative or appreciative thereof. It was very interesting last year and I think it was last year or a while ago when we um, in our small group we got gifts and you were assigned to give a gift to a person. But there was a, a twist to this whole thing. Um, if the second person also uh, was given a gift, you received the gift first. You could decide if you want to swap that gift for the gift that the other person had. Because if they had a gift that, pref that you preferred or that suited you, you could actually say, oh no, I'd like to take that gift. And oh man, I could just imagine how some folks were feeling, oh, I like this gift. And the other person says, oh, I like it too. And then you actually had to give it to the other person. But what about when you receive a gift and you don't like it? What about the benefits of some of the gifts that we receive? Today we're going to look at the gifts of the Holy Spirit, not just one gift. Um, he's a gift to us in any case. God gives us the Holy Spirit as a gift, but he comes to give us gifts that will help us to serve Jesus and to live our lives according to God's purposes. Not every Christian is called to vocational ministry. In other words, I am a salaried staff member. Of urban voice. Uh, this is my job. But every Christian is actually called to do the work of the ministry. In Ephesians 4 verse 12 it says, and this is talking about the people gifts that are given to the church, in verse 12 it says, to equip his people for works of service so that the body of Christ may be built up. We are to be equipped for works of service. People ask me, what is my job? My job is to equip people within our church. I'm a pastor teacher. So part of my job is to equip the people in our church so that they can do the ministry. Can you see how mixed up um, our understanding of ministry has become? People looked at those who are in leadership, those who are elders or pastors, and think, well, they've got to do the work of the ministry. And actually, we give our tithes and offerings and so we keep them there so they, they can do the job for us. Actually, the tithes and offerings that come and it pays my salary is so that I can equip you to do the work of ministry. I am there to equip you to do the work of ministry. But here's the good news. You are not alone. You have gifts that God has given you. And you can serve God. Your ministry is in your job, your family, um, in your community. It's through your church. It's loving people, serving people on behalf of Jesus Christ. And so God has given us spiritual gifts to be used in His ministry. 
And every Christian has at least one spiritual gift. Uh, some people have more. And there are three passages of, of Scripture in the, about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Um, I'm not going to go through all of them. I'm just going to focus on, on one of them. But it's Romans 12, 6 to 8, if you're making notes. Romans 12, 6 to 8. 1 Corinthians 12, 4 to 11. And then also Ephesians 4, 11 to 16. So the first thing that we need to note is that, that it is a gift. A spiritual gift. All believers, as I said before, have received spiritual gifts. Why? Because they've been born of the Spirit. And if you are a believer in Christ, you receive that gift. Paul describes the spiritual gifts and, and what it's to be used for in 1 Corinthians 12. So we're going to look at that passage of Scripture today. In verse 11 it says, It is the one and only Spirit who distributes all these gifts. He alone decides which gift each person should have. So the Holy Spirit decides what gift you're going to get. You don't decide. And you know what? You can do nothing to earn that gift or to get a different gift. You see, because God chooses the gifts. Romans 12 verse 6 in the New International Version it says, We have different gifts according to the grace given to us. According to the grace given to us. Grace is something that we get without doing anything for it. And so we don't choose our spiritual gift. God chooses it for us. God doesn't say, oh, well, you know, it's your birthday today. And um, so I tell you what, I'll give you uh, a gift card for Woolies and you can go and decide which gift you want. Doesn't work that way with God. He gives the gifts that he thinks is best for you. And so like children at Christmas time, when you open up your box and, and you look at the gifts that you have, we ought to be grateful for the gifts that we receive. And also, we ought to be glad for the other children who receive maybe different gifts than what we did. We need to watch that we don't become childish and start to moan and complain because we don't have the gift that the other person has. God's got a particular plan. He's given us the gift. And who are we to say, God, we don't want this gift? So what is the key purpose for spiritual gifts? It is for edifying the church, both individually and corporately. You part of the church, the gift is there to edify another person. Your gift is there to help another person. Edify means to build up. But it's also there that the church together can be built up corporately. But it's also there to bring glory to God. So 1 Corinthians 14 verse 12 says, the second part of the verse, Since you are so eager to have the special abilities the Spirit gives, seek those that will strengthen the whole church. They are given for the purpose of serving other people. That's the, the reason you have this gift. It is not a selfish gift. You know, it's like when I get the gift, it's my gift, like a child. It's my gift. I'm not going to let anyone play with my gift because this is my gift and no one's going to benefit from having this gift. That's very childlike. It's totally different. God gives you a gift and says, hey, use this to benefit others. Use your gift to benefit others. When Grudem says this, when spiritual gifts are active, it is another indication of the presence of God the Holy Spirit in the church. I desire for more of the Holy Spirit gifts to be present within our church. And how does that happen? By equipping God's people, by helping people to discover what their gift is, but also for people to be aware that the gift is there. It's in them. And God wants to release that gift. And so this encourages your faith. It helps you to know that God is near. When someone uses their gift and it builds you up, it helps you to see that he is working and fulfilling his purposes in his church and in the church that you're part of. And actually through you, that God can actually use you so that you can bring a blessing to other people. But these gifts also reminds us of our interdependence. 
In other words, we need one another. We are dependent on each other. You see, spiritual gifts, you know, and acts of service, it's, it comes in a wide variety. All these godly uh, activities, it's these various things that God um, calls us to do. But here's the great thing. There's only one source. All these gifts, it comes from the same Holy Spirit. And Paul actually uses the body as an illustration to teach on the gifts. In 1 Corinthians 12, verse 12 and 13, he says, The human body has many parts, but the many parts make up one body. So it is with the body of Christ. Some of us are Jews, some of us are Gentiles, some are slaves, and some are free. But you have all been baptized into one body by one spirit, and we share the same spirit. And that's again the diversity of the people within your church and the diversity of the gifts that God has given to them. We're part of one body. That's why it is sad when people... Um, you know, we don't go with those people to church and we, we want to separate ourselves from other Christians. No, we're called to be one body that functions together. A human body is one organism, but it's made up of different parts and all have different functions. And in the same way, the church is made up of many believers, all connected by the Holy Spirit. That lives within them. Note that. The Holy Spirit lives within your brother, within your sister. And so the church is one. And Christ is represented on, the ch in, on this earth by his body, which is the church. So differing gifts draw us together because we are forced to depend on one another. In 1 Corinthians 12, verse 21, it says, The eye can never say to the hand, I don't need you. And the head can't say to the feet, I don't need you. We all need each other. And so these gifts are given for the common good. And it's not a status symbol. You know, I saw a, a, a little meme or cartoon where they have two windows and people are queuing up and the one says the gifts of the holy spirit and the other one is a window for the fruit of the holy spirit and there's so many people queuing up for the gifts of the holy spirit and there's no one queuing up for the fruit of the spirit can i say that it needs to be in this order the fruit of the spirit is important because that enables us to show forth the christ-like characters that we, character that he, we have the fruit that is within us. The gifts of the Holy Spirit takes the fruit and the gifts together and it just makes us to be more effective in serving God's purposes and the impact of our ministry. The fruit plus the gifts. And spiritual gifts, you know, are not about the people who use them. They're ultimately about God's purposes. You see, the Holy Spirit, what does it do? He exalts Jesus. He makes Jesus look magnificent. It's not the gifts of men, but it's the gifts of Jesus that is within us. Because you see, all these gifts, Jesus had them. And can I say that as our understanding of the spiritual gifts matures, we get a better understanding not only of our own gifts, but of other people's gifts, our appreciation for the members of the body of Christ that grows and magnifies. When I see the gifts of my brothers and my sisters, I don't want to be jealous of them. I want to be, oh man, I'm so glad they have that gift. I don't have it, but they can actually serve me. And I hope that we are open to wanting to serve one another with our gifts and not withholding it. We're going to talk about that a little bit later. So let's get into these spiritual gifts. So just a question right at the start. What's the difference between a talent and a spiritual gift? I'm sure you asked that question. You know, so there's a natural ability that people have. 
Um, but it's actually an ability that some people have and other people don't. And you may have this ability better than others. So, for example, a Muhammad Salah, you know, has an amazing ability to play football and his left foot is, you know, mercurial. And if you look at a singing ability like a person called Stevie Wonder, who's blind and plays the piano and the harmonica and sings and does all these amazing <laughs> vocal um, abilities, just amazing. Or maybe you, you look at an actress like Meryl Streep, won numerous Oscars for various portrayals of various roles, natural ability. And these are talents that God has given them. God has given them talents. And so everyone has a sort of innate talent, but not everyone has a spiritual gift. And people often think it's the same. A number of spiritual gifts listed um, that we're going to deal with now sounds a lot like natural talents. I'm sure you know of a person who's not a Christian, but he's a talented leader or a teacher. You see, spiritual gifts, there's a word it's called, it's the word spirit. It comes from the Holy Spirit. These are gifts that are only given to those who are born again, those who have accepted Christ into their lives, those who have been made alive by the Holy Spirit. And so they have natural talents as well. So natural talents is for believers as well as unbelievers, but the spiritual gifts are only for believers. Why? Because talents can be used selfishly. Look at my ability to sing or play or act. It's my ability. It can be selfish. Whereas gifts are solely used to serve God's purposes. A definition. I looked at a number of definitions. And I, like, I like John Piper's one and it says, A spiritual gift is an ability given to, by the Holy Spirit to express our faith effectively in word and deed for the strengthening of someone else's faith. Notice there again, it says the strengthening of someone else's faith. It's the impact that this gift has, the spiritual impact it has on someone else's life. In 1 Corinthians 12, 4 to 11, it gives us the whole list of gifts. I'm just going to read the first uh, uh, seven, uh, first three verses of that. It says, there are different kinds of spiritual gifts, but the same spirit is the source of them all. There are different kinds of service, but we serve the same Lord. God works in different ways, but it is the same God who does the work in all of us. Verse seven, a spiritual gift is given to each of us so we can help each other. Paul gives us the ground or foundation of spiritual gifts. And then from verse 8 to 10, he lists the gifts. And uh, I'm going to list it later on. But then he concludes, and I read this verse right at the beginning, verse 11. It says, it is the one and only spirit who distributes all these gifts. And he alone decides which gifts pers a person should have. And so these gifts can be divided into three categories. So I'm just giving you... I'm not going to go through every gift because that's going to take us a whole number of sessions. And we would probably like to do this later on in our church where we would go through each of these gifts and explain it and see how people can actually use it. But I'm just going to look at it in three ways. It's been described in three categories. The first category, it is motivational gifts or speaking gifts. This is how God shapes the believer's perspective on life and, and motivates them through words or actions. And these words build the kingdom of God into the life of the believer. And so we find these gifts as prophesying, serving, teaching, exhorting, encouraging, organizing, giving, leading and mercy. They motivate us. It, it is there to encourage us. It's there to build us, build us up. It shapes our perspective. Secondly, there's the manifestation gifts or the sign gifts. This is how God works in a supernatural way to demonstrate His, His power, His supernatural power. 
And this points to the kingdom of God, the power that comes with the kingdom of God, that supernatural power that brings change. And so we see words of wisdom, a message of knowledge, faith, gifts of healing, miraculous powers, there's prophecy, distinguishing between spirits, speaking in different kinds of tongues, interpretations of different tongues. That's supernatural. There's a manifestation. There's something just not, you know, normal. It's super normal. And then there's the ministry gifts. These are the serving gifts. This is how God works with a believer when a believer serves and meets the needs of another person or does something that helps to build up the kingdom of God. And this can be divided actually into two parts. We get the people gifts. These are people with these gifts. The apostles, the prophets, the evangelists, the pastors and teachers. We find that in Ephesians 4. And they make up of the, the leadership of the church. Not just local churches, but families of churches. You know, church across the nations. But then you also get helpers, the gift of hospitality, the gift of help, the gift of administration. Those are also gifts where they serve the purposes of God in the church and help to serve others. Can I just take a moment and just stop and talk a little bit about the apostolic? Uh, we part of an apostolic movement. Um, and the, our understanding of the word apostle, which we still believe is evident in our world today, it didn't, for us, our understanding, it didn't just cease with the 12 apostles. There's a gifting, a person, a people gift, which is known as an apostle. It is not a title. It is a function. It is a gift that someone has. And so many people now, you know, I, I come across and I went to a conference now recently, and it wasn't done in alphabetical order. It was done in apostles. Prophets, evangelists, you know, I wasn't even on the list there. I was looking for myself under servant Wesley. You know, that's where I prefer um, to, to have a title. If you want to call me something, rather call me a servant. But what does an apostle do? An apostle, apostle today is, is a leader that, that convenes and gathers other Christian leaders. That has a, a, a gift to be able to bring leaders together and to get them to work together on mission, to be able to go into areas that have not been reached before, to mobilize them for the gospel ministry. And so around the world, we have many apostolic movements. We're part of Regions Beyond. Regions Beyond was part of something called New Frontiers, which was led by Terry Virgo. Regions Beyond is led by Steve Oliver. So these are guys who have managed to gather other leaders. And within the group, Within regions beyond, there are other, others who have apostolic giftings as well, who are gathering churches together in, in uh, India, in Malaysia, in Brazil, in the UK, in Africa. So we see it's a, it's a leader, you know, who gathers and convenes as a convening gift that brings people together. I hope that gives you an understanding of what the apostle is. It builds foundations and help to strengthen churches and plant churches and move churches forward in the mission of God. And so now we come back to us. Here's the question is, have you discovered your gift? Do you know what your gift is? If you do know what your gift is, are you using it? Or do you need to get a better understanding of it? And do you need to function in it more, uh, more regularly? What are some of the steps you can take to develop your gift. You see, the Bible says in 1 Corinthians 14 verse 1, follow the way of love and eagerly desire gifts of the Spirit. And then it says especially prophecy. So eagerly desire, pursue these gifts. Don't neglect it or ignore it. And now we don't exercise our gifts perfectly first time round. You know, we have to be curious. We have to test it. We've got to explore it. We, we don't also say, no, I don't, you know, I can't do that. You know, allow God to show you. Ask others to help you to discern. And you know what? Others will recognize your gift. I remember as a 23-year-old young man preaching at my church, 
Um, one Sunday morning, which was always a daunting task, Sunday evening was fine, Sunday morning, you know, was more of a challenge. And I remember right at the end, you know, you go down and you shake hands with the pastor, and this one dear lady, a really old lady, I, I actually couldn't even remember her name, but I know what she said to me. She said to me, young man, when you open up God's word, it helps me to understand God's purposes. She said something like that. And then she said this verse in 2 Timothy 1 verse 6. This is why I remind you to fan into flame the spiritual gift God gave you when I laid my hands on you. She just said to me, Wesley, fan into flame the spiritual gift God has given you. Do you know what that did for me? It gave me a desire to want to know God's word, want to study God's word, and to become a good communicator and teacher of God's word. Fan into flame. How do you fan into flame? You see, the Lord wants us to be hot and burning in our love for Him and in our service for Him. If we love God, we want to serve Him and to use our gifts for His glory and for the fame of His name. We'll be burning to serve Him in that way. And that is why we need to fan the flame. And even if you aren't burning right now, right? You know, our spirit is still a glowing ember. If you come to faith in Jesus, but you're not burning right now, your spirit is still a glowing ember. And the Holy Spirit has ignited you with fire already. And now you need to fan into flame. Give it more oxygen until it's burning once more. And take some steps that will cause your fire to use your gifts, to discover more of your gifts, to look for opportunities to use the gifts. Not to just sit back, but to say, hey, I want to serve here. I've got this gift. Let me see if I can't help there. That will come and your passion inside of you will cause you to want to use that gift. And we are to serve using the gifts. Remember, the word is all about serving others. It's not the gift for yourself. And each gift is used to serve the Lord Jesus. Even Jesus himself was referred to as God's holy servant. God wants us to be faithful servants. And often we can serve God on our own terms, eh? We want to do for God what we want to do. I'll serve you, God, but you know, I won't do that. Or oh God, no, I'm not, I won't go there. That's, you know, me. It doesn't fit my personality, God. That's just not me. Oh, and, and God, just don't interfere with my plans. I'll serve you and I'll help you and there, but actually, the other things that are very important to me, I don't want you to interfere that I have to go and serve there when I've got something else that is more important for me to do. We forget that he's the master and he assigns the task. How can a servant tell the Lord, his master, I'm not going to do that. I'd rather want to do something else. You see, our attitude should be, here I am, Lord. And I've come to do your will. Allow him to be your focus. And then for him to show you who you need to serve, how you need to serve, where you need to serve. We are to give ourselves to Him. We are to accept any assignment that He gives us because He equips us to do it. He says, I've given you the gift, now go and do it. Serve me because you have the gift. John 15 verse 16, Jesus speaking to His disciples says, you didn't choose me, I chose you. I appointed you to go and produce lasting fruit so that the Father will give you whatever you ask for using my name. God chose you. God wants to give you things that you're asking in His name. And it's not things for you, it's things for other people. Those lost friends that you want to witness to and God's given you a passion to tell them about Jesus. If you pray, if you act on your gift, allow the Holy Spirit to use that gift, you will see how He uses it to change other people's lives. If we do not accept 
and obediently, obediently use our spiritual gifts, we actually neglecting the grace of God in our lives. We've received this amazing gifts and we've just popped it one side. And actually, it this is God. It is not something that honors Him. If you dissatisfied with your spiritual gift and you decide you're not going to use it, can I tell you what? You still have the gift. It's still there. You still have the same role in the body of Christ. But you've just refused to function. And so neglected gifts diminish the church's effectiveness. And can I say, when you don't use your gifts, you actually forfeit the joy and the privilege of carrying out God-given assignments on earth. You will miss out on seeing all the things that God wants to do through you, in you, and you'll be saying, wow, look at amazing God he is. I'm normally joking and say, yeah, the Lord took a disaster and he turned him into a pastor. Yes, he wants to do that. He wants to turn your life around. Every time you serve him and you do something for him, using your gifts, you have this deep sense of, wow, look what God has done in my life. It is humbling, but man, it fills you up with so much joy to be able to serve God's purposes. And I want to end off by reading a passage from Peter. 1 Peter 4, verse 10 and 11. God has given each of you a gift from his great variety of spiritual gifts. Use them well to serve one another. Do you have the gift of speaking? Then speak as though God himself was speaking through you. Do you have the gift of helping others? Do it with all the strength and energy that God supplies, then everything you do will bring glory to God through Jesus Christ. All glory and power to Him forever and ever. Amen. So what about you today? We've done this whole series, six weeks. How's the Holy Spirit been active in your life? Have you opened yourself up more? Have you said, I want to be under the influence of the Holy Spirit. I want to see Him active in my life, transforming me, making me more like Jesus, helping the fruit of the Spirit to be shown to others who need to experience it, and then using my gifts to bring people and draw people closer to Him, but also to serve my brothers and sisters in the church. Last Sunday, as we were praying before our meeting, one of our uh, brothers, he brought this word out of Proverbs that says, As iron sharpens iron. And I want to challenge us today. If you remember of Urban Voice Gordons Bay, are you sharpening the person next to you? Are you actively involved in sharpening one another? Have, we come a bit, have you become a bit dull? Your blade is not as sharp as what it used to be. Can I say part of that is using your gifts but using it to serve one another in your life groups, in your small groups. Now, even with someone who's not in your small group, that the Holy Spirit is guiding you and showing you you need to use your gift to serve them, to build up the church. Can I encourage you to do that? It's not dependent on the elders alone to build up this church. We have our gifts. We're trying to serve God the best with our gifts. But we can be functional and be more effective when everyone in our church not only knows their gifts, but use their gifts for the glory of God. Let's pray together. Father, we come to you this morning because we need again a fresh touch, an empowering, a fanning of the flame within our lives. Some people, Lord, they need to be set alight and ignited by the Holy Spirit because they don't know you. And they now need, they've come to a point where they're wanting to know you personally. And I pray, Holy Spirit, right now, won't you ignite them with a passion to want to know God. Pray for those of us who've been watching this morning. Some of us have been newer Christians and we're still discovering our gifts. Pray that you would help us to be desiring and eagerly desire to have the gifts, to, to know the gifts, to exercise the gifts. Pray for us who are older. Maybe the ember is just glowing. We haven't used our gifts in a long time. 
Pray right now, Holy Spirit, come and convict us, but also excite us and encourage us to use the gifts so that we can give you glory. In Christ's name I pray. Amen. If this series has really helped you, especially the sermon today, maybe you want to know a little bit more about the gifts, and, or maybe you've come to faith, maybe God has ignited your fire, the Holy Spirit has now set you alight, please contact me, Wesley, at urbanvoice.org.za. And I'd love to help you to grow in your faith and to move forward in following Jesus. We're going to have a once-off sermon um, next week. It is going to be Father's Day. Um, so we'll have a once-off sermon next week. And then we're going to start a new series called Health Check. We're going to look at the book of 1 Thessalonians. And we're going to preach through that. But we're also going to do a Bible study around that whole book. So looking forward to you joining us again next week and then also for the next series as we start this. God bless you. Have a fantastic day further.